Welcome. My name is Doug Morton, and I'll be highlighting the advanced steel topic today. In this video, we'll be looking at the class checking tool in advanced steel. This is a fairly straightforward tool. The purpose is to find situations where an element clashes with another element or with a reserve space around a fastener. Once you finish your modeling, and before you do your numbering, it's often recommended to come in and check your model to see if there are any clashes or collisions taking place. In here, we're going to come to the Extended Modeling tab and go to the checking area. The tool at the top is called the Collision or Clash Check. And if you run that, you're going to end up going through your entire model to see if there are any collisions taking place. When done, you'll see a dialog opens up and you'll have information here about the different clashes. You can sort these by clicking on the header of each column. And so, for example, if you wanted to sort your clashes by the size of the volume that is included in that clash, you can come to the volume header and just click on it. Clicking on it a second time will change it from ascending to descending. You also have in here tools at the bottom. The first button being for clash check, which will rerun the checking to go through your model again. The second one will look for the objects. So if you highlight one of the clashes and click on this, it will point towards or highlight one of the clashes that are taking place. This third tool will clear that marking that takes place when you highlight it. So it will set it back and remove any marking. You then have an option to ignore the object. So if you wanted to, you could ignore one of the lines here in the class check. And even if you rerun it, it doesn't come back. So rerunning a class check, it still stays hidden. When you're finished going through it, if you want to see those hidden items again, that last button brings them all back. So let's take a look at how this works. I've run the tool. I see I have two clashes. I have a couple of options here. One, I can highlight it and then point at it. Now, when you do that, you'll see my model is shaded here. And so I get this kind of arrow that is hollow in the middle pointing towards a, an area. It's difficult to see. It's often recommended when you're doing your class check that you go to 2D wireframe. Like this, you'll get your solid arrow pointing towards an area and the physical clash that is actually taking place is defined by this red marker inside of your model. So you can see exactly what is clashing and where. With that said, you can also remove that marking by clicking on the cleared marked objects. Once you know what the issue is, you can come in, you can handle it. So I'll just put in, for example, here, a double-sided clip angle. And I will pick my passing beam and the two beams that are connecting on either side. Just change that to uh, vertical bolts. And I want uh, just two, not three. There we go. Okay. So I have a choice. I can close this and reopen it, or I can just run the clashing again. And you'll see it's going through it. And it tells me now, collision check found no errors. Once you see this, you know you're good to proceed and you can start doing your numbering. Everything's been handled. Your model is correct. There are no clashes taking place. If you find something that you think you don't need to address, simply ignore it. One of the other things that you might be interested in setting up before doing your clash checking, though, is the uh, area around the bolts. If you want to leave a, an area for tools when you're checking to see does anything collide with that area. To do that, you come to the Home tab and go to Management Tools. Here under Defaults, we're going to find, if we just type in Factor, you'll see there is a Collision Control General, which gives us Bolt Head Diameter Factor, Height, Nut Diameter Factor, and Height. And here we have anchors. Okay. So we have the ability to set the factors for checking. And basically what this is going to tell us is we want to look at whatever the size or height of that object is, 
times a certain factor, one and a half, one and point seven. And so when we're looking at the imperial values, basically it, they've been converted from metric and the, the value we see here doesn't make a lot of sense. So to handle this or to see it properly, we can come to the home to area under unit selection, and we can temporarily change just the values that we see things in to let's say millimeter apply. Now what that does is it just, it affects only the management tools. And if I come back into defaults and look for factors again, you'll notice now when I look at it, the bolt head factor is 1.7. So it's whatever the bolt head distance is or length, size times 1.7. Bolt head height factor times 1.5 and so on. Okay. So then you can set that to whatever you want. That way you get the value or area around your bolts and nuts that are also included when you do collision checking. You'll notice if I hover over it, it says the nut height bolt diameter times this factor is used for the collision check. And it will take into account the area required for those tools to get in there and work when it does collision checking. When you're done, you can simply set this back to Imperial. And you'll see everything the way you did before. With your factor set, after running the collision check, your model should be set up so that there are no more areas where you know pieces may not be connected. This is a good way to find out if you've missed a connection or not, or parts clashing with one another that you didn't realize were clashing. It's also going to find if you have parts on top of each other. So if you have a beam on top of a beam, you don't see it, or a plate on top of a plate, you don't see it because they're occupying the same space this will find that as well. So it will let you know that there is a clash taking place. It'll point to it. And if you don't see anything wrong, just check to see that there aren't two pieces, one on top of the other, the same size. Right. So collision checking will help you find any errors prior to doing your numbering and piece marking. Thank you for taking the time to watch and have a great day.